So uh, we will evaluate um, new therapies and therapies that uh, would forestall or delay the disease progression, what's called progression-free survival or disease-free survival for periods of time. There, there's a lot of writing that's been done on the, the quality-adjusted life year construct and evaluating uh, new medical technologies, new medical treatments. Um, we, we will certainly take into consideration uh, what seems to be uh, what, what uh, others are looking at in terms of, of the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, NCCN, ASCO, and the like. Um, again, I can't give you any um, definitive answer on a particular situation because every situation is going to be evaluated on its own um, with a lot of um, careful consideration that looks at side effects, safety, tolerability, what is the progression-free survival amount of time? Is it two days or 200 days? So those kinds of things will all go into um, weighing the evidence and, and making a, a reasoned, rational, informed decision. So the question is, will real-world data play a role with, with CLL for coverage or other value decisions? The real-world data will increasingly inform not only us, but perhaps more importantly, the clinical organizations that are providing the care for those organizations that are in value-based frameworks, not only in our oncology episode of care or bundles, but in total cost of care models that we have with accountable care organizations, with large patient-centered medical home organizations. So where there is a shared focus on the clinical outcome, the total cost, and the patient experience of care, the triple aim, um, real world data will be, will be very important, is very important, and will be very important. So the question is, is there any other component uh, around CLL? And I think we've really covered all the key areas, the total cost for an episode, the tolerability, and the um, side effects uh, profile of a particular course of treatment or type of treatment, um, the, the ability of, of uh, institutions we're working with to um, adequately uh, support that treatment, whatever that treatment may be. So as you're looking at treatment alternatives, um, perhaps uh, infused therapy has a leg up in certain situations because you know you're going to give it. It's very predictable. We're not sure if the person is adherent to oral therapies. On the other hand, uh, we might say, well, oral therapy options are uh, much more convenient for the patient, have a better tolerability, um, allow people to continue to, to live and go to work and things like that. So there, there are lots of what I would call trade-off analysis. I don't think they go beyond the triple aim. The, the quadruple aim that we talk about, the fourth part of that is healthcare professional um, sustainability and, and, and satisfaction, but that gets into different considerations about workflow, administrative burden, and things like that. So I, I can't think of anything else outside of the triple aim that would be influencing our decisions around, around CLL alternatives.